All right, hey there, we're gonna talk about the Roaring Twenties and a bunch of different things that are going to happen in this time period, uh, really setting up some major economic problems later on in the decade. Now, first and foremost, the important thing to understand is that in the 1920s, there is a total, um, for the most part, a total lack of regulation within economics, which is this laissez-faire capitalism, um, which is simply this belief that just kind of survival of the fittest, less stuff happen, you just let it run its course, okay? You don't need to have the government intervening. The best business is naturally going to be the one that's going to be succeeding. The one that's not very good is going to fall apart, crumble and go out of business. We really don't need the government regulating what is going on, okay? This is a laissez-faire capitalism. Additionally, at this time period, the government's going to weaken the power of labor unions. Now, labor unions are here together, um, is what they do is they have workers come together, they argue for the same rights and the same working conditions, higher wages and safer conditions for the most part um, at this. Now, these are kind of things that for the most part are going to be costing companies more money uh, the protection of the workers. So is what they're going to be doing at this time period is they're going to try to weaken the power of the labor unions as a way of kind of profiting for these large businesses and these corporations to be going about and making more money. Additionally, the assembly line is going to be growing and developing at this time period. It's an invention by Henry Ford, the inventor of the automobile, okay? Uh, what he's going to do though, he's gonna take this for Ford Motors and instead of having everyone uh, in this factory building an individual car, each person is going to have a specialized task as you can see in this picture right here, the automobile goes right on there. As it goes down, okay, one person is going to put the tire on. The next person is going to screw it into place, okay? Your job is simply just worrying about that one individual thing, which means you can create a lot more products in a shorter amount of time. Additionally, there's gonna be a new inventions that are just booming at this time period. Different things we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, this is going to mean there's other things going on. One of these major examples is the automobile right through here, okay? And automobile production is going to triple at this time period. Additionally, US corporations are going to spread overseas and this is significant because now you have a creation of a global economy. So if something's going bad in the United States, economically speaking, it's going to be going wrong in other countries that depend upon the United States and vice versa. Next, we're gonna be talking about okay, US produ or production at this time. Uh, US production is going to be 40% of the world's manufactured goods in the 1920s. You can see at this time, the United States is manufacturing a ton of stuff and they have a lot of stuff going on. Additionally, there is a large amount of the world which is investing and putting money into the United States, into the US companies, ensuring that these companies are going to keep producing so that they can keep buying. Additionally, is going to be uh, the growth of automated manufacturing, which is going to mean more time for leisure. So for example, you don't have to spend your entire day washing clothes because you can put it in the washing machine and let the washing machine do it for you. So they're going to get stuff like the radio, which is important. So you can listen to music and get news communications as well. People are just going on drives because at this time, more people have automobiles than previously before. We can go out dancing to jazz, a new style of music, anything like that. Go to the baseball game, you can see right here with people like Babe Ruth. Go on vacations to somewhere new or movies. Okay, the American film industry is going to blossom and grow at this time period. By 1925, the U.S. film industry has become the greatest in the world. It's going to move out to California uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, land was incredibly cheap at that time period. Number two, there's a lot of sun pretty much all the time in Southern California, so it's easy to shoot. Number three is the entire state of California can be used for a number of different film locations, as you can see right here. This map from Paramount Studios. Uh, so if someone's filming something in California, they need to have a Wyoming cattle ranch. They can go over the Wyoming, or the Nevada, California border versus traveling all the way up to Wyoming. If you need the desert in Sudan, just go to Nevada. It's cheaper than flying all the way over to Sudan. Additionally, okay, we're gonna move on in the growth of credit. Now credit is defined as the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before the payment. This is based on a trust that payment will be made in the future. So basically you state that, yep, I'm gonna pay for this later. Um, just write me down for this thing and I'll come back and I'll pay for it later on interest. So you're gonna be willing if you're the producer and you're the one selling something, you like this because you're making more money. You're gonna give it to them right now, but later they're gonna pay you back for that good plus interest for making you wait on this one. Consumers like this because they are going to be getting stuff they could not previously have. Also, it's important to understand that at this time, it's viewed as socially acceptable to go into debt if it means keeping the American standard of living. So for example, if your neighbors and everyone living around you all has an automobile, you can't afford an automobile, 
take it on credit, okay? Go into that debt to have an automobile. If your neighbors have all washing machines, it's okay if you go into debt to have a washing machine as long as you're keeping that American standard of living. Also, at this time, we're gonna get the Harlem Renaissance, which is where African Americans are moving up from the cities in the south up into the north, okay? This is about 50, 60 years after the end of slavery in the, uh, in the south. So these are the children and grandchildren of former slaves. Uh, moving out of the South up into the North. And this is going to bring a rebirth of African American culture, okay? We're gonna be celebrating the African American experience, something that would not really been going on previously, okay, due to um, racism and oppression in the South. We're also going to get stuff like jazz, okay? Jazz music is going to be coming in at this time period, making a number of different, um, really large social cultural impacts in the U.S. at this time period. And the belief is we will fight back. Okay? Their rejection of prejudice and racism and the systematic racism and prejudice that has been going on in the South is the belief that they're going to fight back and not allow this to be happening from this point forward. Women's, women are going to be gaining many, many rights in the Roaring Twenties. Uh, they're going to gain the right to vote within the United States in 1919. Um, they're going to kind of take this and really be treated differently than they have been treated before. Uh, shorter skirts, smoking cigarettes, dancing, drinking in public. Uh, women, you can see like this lady right here known as a flapper, um, these dancers, okay, going out. And this whole time period is really about um, having leisure, a way of going out, having fun, and just enjoying life. Uh, the women are going to find new ways of expressing themselves publicly. No longer are they stuck at home cooking and cleaning and raising the kids. Now they're going out and having some fun as well. However, it is important to understand that they are still expected to find their freedom at home. Uh, prosperity of the economy, though, is not going to be equal, okay? Industrial rage, wages are going to rise by 20% only. So that's going to mean the workers, the blue collar people working in the factory, the miners, anyone like that are only gonna be making about 20% raise in, or wage increase during the 20s compared to corporate wages. People like Copper Clink King, William Clark, this mine man with that disgusting slash awesome mustache and chin beard going on right there their wages are going to rise by 50%. So they're thinking money, 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 anything I can do to make money. Industrial wages are also rising, but not at the same rate as the corporate wages. 40% of Americans though are going to be living in poverty still at this time period. So there is a lot of money. Um, a lot of people do have these new inventions like the washing machine and the radio. However, 40% of Americans are living in poverty, meaning they're not going to be having these different inventions. Additionally, the growth of big business is going to mean the decline of small businesses. So we're going to have these large businesses come about uh, and they're going to be kind of controlling the marketplace. So if one of them fall, that means everyone is really going to be suffering because there are not that many small businesses anymore at this time. Questions, comments, put them down below. Otherwise, good luck.